Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today we're going to be going over the alphabetic principle. You will see this concept on all teaching reading exams, and you will also see it on your elementary education exams in the reading section. So the 5002, the 7812, the science of teaching reading, the foundations of reading, any reading exam is going to talk about the alphabetic principle. And you may also see it on your ESOL or ESL exams because this is part of learning to read and this is on many exams that have to do with that. Let's get started. So recently I did a video on the science of teaching reading. I also did a bunch of videos on phonemic awareness and phonological awareness and phonics and all of that. If you haven't watched those, I highly recommend those as well as this video. So I will link them up here so that you can watch them. But today we're going to be talking about the alphabetic principle, which is another foundational skill. And it kind of lays underneath all the other skills. So one of the researchers that has a lot to say about this particular part of reading is Ari. She is an educational researcher, a psychologist, and she is a expert in the reading process. In fact, I have cited her in my publications because she does such a good job in laying out the alphabetic principle and the stages of the alphabetic principle. So when we think about the alphabetic principle, I want you to go way back to when we were in, you know, preschool or even before that. We start to understand symbols and pictures. We don't really know that what letters mean or that letters actually have sounds, but we're starting to be exposed to pictures in our environmental print and things like that. So let me show you an example of that in my presentation. All right, so when we're little kids and we're in the car with our parents, we know that this means stop. Now, nobody really explicitly says it to us. I mean, our mothers might say, oh, that's a stop sign. You know, she might point it out to us or someone might point it out to us. But we've been exposed to this shape and this color, and we know that it means stop. Now, in the pre-alphabetic phase of the alphabetic principle, we don't know that there's an S in there, a T, an O, and a P. We just know that this symbol means stop. And that's why it's called pre-alphabetic, because it's before we know about the alphabet. We just kind of understand that this is a symbol and we know that it means stop. The same thing might happen when we see this as little kids, right? We know that M on that fry container means McDonald's. And when we're little, we might say McDonald's when we see the big M when we're driving in the car. That we still don't know that it's an it's an M and it makes a M sound and that there's a C in there and a D and all of that. We just know that that M and those colors tell us that that is McDonald's. The same thing with this symbol here. We know as little kids, when we see a jar like this, it's peanut butter. Do we know that there's a P and an E and an A and an N and a U and a T and it, you know, they all come together to make the sound peanut? No, but we know that this jar means peanut butter. We like the way it tastes. And so this is kind of that environmental print and it's the start of the alphabetic principle. Now, again, that's why it's called the pre-alphabetic phase of the alphabetic principle, because we're not really understanding letters yet. We're just knowing that this thing that we're seeing represents something. So that's the pre-alphabetic stage. Now, as we move further through the alphabetic principle, we get to the next stage, which is the partial alphabetic stage. Now, this is really going to lay the foundation of phonics. Now, if you've seen my videos before on phonics, you know that phonics represents letter sound correspondence, meaning that when we see a letter like a B, we know it makes a B sound, right? If we see a, the letter A, we know it might make a a sound or an A sound. We learn that in school as we're learning phonics, letter sound correspondence. We see the letter and we, we understand that it has a corresponding sound. So the alphabetic principle lays the foundation for those skills in phonics. Now, phonics is a little more complex in that we might see a C followed by an E, I, or Y and know that the C makes us sound. 
and the silent E at the end of a word is silent. Those are more complex phonics skills. But in the beginning, we're learning that alphabetic principle. So we started in the pre-alphabetic stage, which is no letters. We don't understand letters. We just know these symbols, McDonald's, the stop sign in the peanut butter jar, environmental print. Sometimes it's referred to that things in our environment. We know what they are because we attach the symbols to those. Then we move into the partial alphabetic stage where we start to understand that there are some letters on these labels, on these signs that mean something. Let's have a look at what that looks like. All right. So when we were growing up in school, and if you're a teacher right now in elementary, you might be using cards like this. We see that we have the letter A. So now we're in the partial alphabetic, right? Because we are seeing some letters and we know that this apple makes a ah sound. And so we start to correspond the A with the apple, ah, ah. So it's partial alphabetic here. So we're not just looking at the apple alone without the letter. We are kind of assigning a letter here, not the full word apple, just the beginning sounds. We might also use something like this when we are in the partial alphabetic stage. You see we have the A, the uppercase and lowercase, then we have the apple, then we have the acorn. So we're starting to understand that it has the long A or the short A, A, and the astronaut. So we have a bunch of different ways A is represented here. Now again, it's partial. We don't see the full words. We're just kind of pulling out sounds in these particular pictures and we're assigning it to a letter here. So letter sound correspondence. This is the beginning of phonics. It is the partial alphabetic stage of reading. So we started off with the pre-alphabetic, then we went to partial. Now we're going to go to the full alphabetic stage. And that's where we can see all the letters in the word and understand that they make sounds and we kind of put them together. So let's go back to our stop sign really quickly. So you can see here that now we're, you know, a little bit older and we understand we're like stop. We know that the S makes a S, the T makes a T, the O makes a A, and the P makes a P sound. So we have taken all the letters on this sign and we understand it says stop. So now we're in the full alphabetic stage. We're starting to put it all together to make the full word here. So rather than just the symbol, we also have the word here. Now the symbol certainly helps when we're young readers. We know that that red stop sign means stop and then we attach the S-T-O-P. So it certainly prompts us and helps us understand that. But this is called the full alphabetic stage where we are putting all the letters together in a word, sounding it out and understanding that they all have individual sounds to make up the entire word. So pre-alphabetic, partial alphabetic, full alphabetic, then we get into the consolidated alphabetic stage. And this is where we understand patterns in words. And this is really where the phonics comes in. We kind of understand prefixes and suffixes. We'll understand certain letter combinations that make certain sounds. And then we're able to kind of understand our sight words a little bit better and read a little bit more quickly and understand the letter sound correspondence in a more complex manner. Let me show you what that looks like. So you can see we have fight, sight, bright, and blight. The I-G-H-T makes an ite sound, okay? So if I'm in the consolidated alphabetic stage and I see that I-G-H-T after a consonant, I know it makes an ite. And so I'm quickly able to grab that information from my brain and figure out these words relatively quickly. I'm moving towards, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm moving towards the automatic stage, which is the last part of the alphabetic principle. Right now we are in the consolidated alphabetic stage, which means I can quickly grab that I-G-H-T or other letter combinations together and identify words. And that brings us to the very last stage, which is the automatic stage, which means we are reading fluently. We're able to automatically see words and kind of just say them. Now, 
even as an adult, I still have to sound out big words. If I'm reading biology or if I'm reading, a, you know, a complex text, I still sometimes have to be like, what is that word? And sound it out. So we all kind of have to go back to our phonics skills, even as seasoned readers. But when we're at the automatic stage, when we're reading grade level text, when we're on grade level, we're able to just kind of read through those words, quickly decode and be automatic in our reading, which is a huge part of fluency, right? We want students to have automaticity, prosody, and read at a proper rate in order to have that fluency, which then pushes them towards comprehension. If we're sitting there sounding out every single word in the passage, our cognitive endurance goes down. I'm sure you've seen it. Kids struggle to read. It's like exhausting. And um, when they're automatic, they don't have to do that. They kind of move through the text at a good pace and they're able to comprehend better because they're not wasting cognitive energy on sounding out the words. Instead, they're using that cognitive energy to comprehend and their brain is just automatically finding those words and understanding, you know, what those words are. So those are the five stages of the alphabetic principle. Let's review them one more time. We have the pre-alphabetic stage. That's where we are just looking at symbols and kind of understanding that they mean something. We're not reading any letters. It's just the symbol, the peanut butter jar, the stop sign. We don't really see the S-T-O-P. We just know the red, the, the McDonald's M, the golden arches, those symbols, that environmental print. That's why when we talk about environmental print in our classroom, we want to make sure we hang signs signs on the door, on the sink, you know, on the pencil sharpener, these things students will start to understand because it's through their pre-alphabetic stage. Then we move into partial alphabetic where we're taking pieces of the words. So just the first letter or the last letter. And we are understanding that A and apple go together. A and astronaut go together. Notice it's partial because we're not looking at the whole word. We're just you know, figuring out, oh, that's an A or a B with bat, things like that. Then we have the full alphabetic stage where we're actually looking at the stop sign and going st up. We know it has an S, a T, an O, and a P. Full alphabetic, meaning all the letters in the words, and we're able to kind of sound them out and assign a letter sound correspondence to those words. Then we have the consolidated alphabetic stage where we're able to kind of identify patterns in words, like the ones I said in the I, G, H, T, maybe prefixes, suffixes, roots, things like that. And you're kind of able to pull out that information from a word and read multiple words that have those same patterns. And then finally, we have the automatic stage where we're just cooking. We're moving through the text, we're putting it all together, and we're able to read words on the page. Now, one more thing I want to kind of touch on here. When we talk about the reading process, we tend to talk about a linear process because it's easy for us and for me to explain it. So I often talk about how, you know, you get phonemic awareness and phonological awareness first, and then you get phonics, and then you get fluency, and then you get vocabulary, and then you get comprehension, right? But really, these skills are kind of happening in more of a dynamic way. There are still stages in a continuum. You're not gonna go to the consolidated phase before you've started with the pre-alphabetic. However, you can notice how we're still being exposed to full words when we walk into a classroom and we see the stop sign, or we see the peanut butter jar, or we see words on cards. We're being exposed to them, so we might be getting a little bit of that even if we're in the pre-alphabetic stage. And of course, the alphabetic principle is laying the foundation for phonics. And you notice as I was going through that alphabetic principle, those phonics concepts are in there. So as we're learning the alphabetic principle, as we're working with environmental print, it's supporting our phonics skills. It's supporting our fluency skills. So it's not just like, I will first learn alphabetic principle, then phonemic awareness, then phonological awareness, then phonics, then, you know, it's not as simple and as linear as that. It does kind of happen like that on a continuum, but it's 
dynamic as well. We might move in and out of this as we are learning these words. More complex words, we might have to go back a little bit to our sounding out each individual symbol in the word. When we get to easier words, we might be more automatic. So just kind of understand, we talk about it in a linear way, especially when we're prepping for the test, because it's easier to kind of put it into those concepts. But when we're dealing with students, you know, it's much more dynamic and um, we want to pay attention to that. All right. So I hope that helps you today with the alphabetic principle. Remember, you will see these on any elementary reading exams and also your ESOL or ESL exams. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and let me know if you'd like more on you know, foundational skills and reading. I have tons of videos on this and lots of people need help in this area. So let me know how you're doing and I hope you have an awesome day.